What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and there have been some reports which put a little bit of doubt whether Timo Werner would be going to Liverpool but James Pierce, who is a very well connected Liverpool based journalist, he has been a Liverpool uh, journalist for many many years and he's working for The Athletic, he used to work for the Liverpool Echo and this was what he said about what he heard regarding Liverpool's pursuit of Timo Werner. I've read in some places that Liverpool definitely won't be signing him. My information is that that's not the case. That Liverpool are still very very keen on Timo Werner and in this video we will talk about many many different things. Melissa Reddy also gave a detailed article on Timo Werner so I will give you that brand new information as well as a Premier League footballer's views on the project restart and the Premier League resuming in this uh, very uncertain times and that is a very very interesting interview so I really want you guys to listen to this video in full and if you guys enjoy this leave a like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you never miss the latest Liverpool and football news and this is what Maddie Soretti said uh, in the independent newspaper Liverpool have not ended their interest in signing Timo Werner but the, the club have made no concrete decisions around transfers given the financial implications of this health crisis and it's just uncertain financial times uh, and how it will reshape the market. Liverpool remain, uh, Liverpool remain a Timo Werner's main destination of choice if he were to leave RB Leipzig in the summer and he labeled Jurgen Klopp as the best coach in the world. Werner has been scouting and assessed since uh, 2015 by Liverpool with their analysis escalating over the past two years given his uh, stylistic suitability to fill an attacking role at the club and 24 year old Werner both publicly and privately his declarations that he wants to improve and he would not be put off by the challenge of having to fight for his place at Liverpool that actually actually addressed the only question mark regarding Timo Werner whether would he want to sit on the bench sometimes because Mane, Salah and Firmino are just such an established such a world-class front free that sometimes Timo Werner especially in his early days of his Liverpool career would have to sit on the bench and he, he would be prepared to fight for his place and be on the bench sometimes. And Jurgen Klopp and the Liverpool recruitment team isn't about the first three months but the first three years of a new transfers uh, Liverpool career and they do very detailed character assessment of how a player would cope with being out of uh, the starting eleven. Andy Robertson and Fabinho were in their early days of their careers and also these players that Liverpool are looking at they would need to absorb the demands on and off the pitch by Liverpool and there have been differing reports over the release clause inserted into the contract extension Werner signed with Leipzig last summer. The consensus is that he, will, he would be available for around 50 million pounds which is very very good value. Since this uh, financial crisis hit uh, all football clubs around the world and especially in the Premier League you could say that maybe his price will be lower. And before this uh, football s got suspended in England Liverpool were willing to sanction a deal that cost 50 million for Timo Werner because that was basically the price for Mane and Firmino adjusted for inflation. However this global health crisis has removed the certainty and the surety from transfer plannings as clubs incomes and revenues have plummeted uh, to unprecedented levels and there is no certainty how this, this season and the next season will unfold what kind of revenues will be coming in to Liverpool and that's why Liverpool are hesitating whether to move ahead with this transfer or not. Liverpool had already been preparing for a relatively quiet summer before the crisis unless significant problems emerge such as a big big injury to a key player for example. And what is also significant in this Timo Werner transfer saga is that Leipzig sporting director Marcus Kroesche has already conceded that the transfer fees that Leipzig were demanding for their stars like Timo Werner, like Dio Upamakano who is a centre-back 
are rather unlikely at least this summer due to the health crisis and the financial crisis hitting the football transfer markets as well and Liverpool want to keep up the smart uh, transfer um, strategy that served them so so well in the past few years signing Takumi Minamino for seven and a half million is just the latest example but Liverpool haven't spent a big big money for the past 18 months so I think Liverpool have some cash in reserve and Liverpool have been very skilled in securing deals that weren't like the marquee signings the likes of Andy Robertson uh, Vinaldum, Firmino and even a Salah and Mane weren't like this this huge blockbuster world-class player coming to Anfield and uh, there is uh, still a big emphasis at Liverpool on finding value this summer Liverpool's Padre analytic analytics team will be seeking out clever moves uh, like signing Joao Matip on a free transfer activating Sharon Shakiri and Takumi Minamino's very low release clauses but I still think that 50 million pounds for Timo Werner is a value signing even in these uncertain financial times because in a normal financial times, Timo Werner would cost, without his release clause, he would cost about 80 to 100 million pounds. We are talking about a striker who has scored easily 20 goals a season before this season, and this season he is on course to be a 30 goal a season striker. He is sitting on 27 goals. There is still nine games to go in the Bundesliga and some cup games, uh, some Champions League games as well. So he could easily score 35 to 40 goals this season. And those kind of strikers go for around 80 to 100 million pounds. And I think Timo Werner being 23 years old is one for the future definitely and I think he would be a brilliant signing for the long term but I don't see Liverpool's financial situation right now so that's why we can't really comment on uh, whether Liverpool will go ahead with this transfer or not. And Ian Wright called the Premier League uh, the punching bag of uh, the current situation reminding that uh, the Premier League have to have meetings because at some stage things have to start again. Football is a game but it's still a business and just like other businesses they are making plans to try and get themselves going again. The scale of the ruinous effects of the pandemic could have on football is no secret. Richard Masters, the Premier League's chief executive, warned that the football industry is losing revenue at an unprecedented level adding that the very heavy losses that we face will have to be dealt with or else clubs or other enterprises who depend on football for income will go out of business and that's what I was talking about in previous videos as well if football doesn't restart for like a, a lot of months then a lot of clubs will go bankrupt and a lot of businesses and a lot of people related and connected to football and to the Premier League will also go bankrupt and we don't really want that to happen that could have an even more devastating effect than the vi virus has on people's lives and the chief executive highlighted a minimum loss of one billion pounds if the Premier League season is not completed and that figure could balloon and go even higher if next season will be not completed as well Greg Cog the chairman of the FA admitted that the football as a game faces economic challenges beyond the, the, beyond the wildest imagination of those who run it. We face the danger of losing clubs and leagues as finances collapse. Many communities could lose the clubs at their heart with a little chance of resurrection. That's the sad reality. Football clubs just don't have reserves to go 12 to 18 months without any revenue coming in. I mean, no business has cash reserves to go that long. Uh, without any revenue coming in. Dr. Rob Wilson, who is the author of Managing Sport Finance, said this, and I think this is very interesting. We have had over 16,500 deaths now in the UK, so the Premier League have a meeting, having a meeting to plan for the future in the midst of this sounds fairly absurd, 
But actually though, it's what any business should be doing, trying to navigate the minefield that it faces. A big part of that is thinking through the return of football when it's deemed safe, there's the sporting integrity element to finishing the season, but also the fundamental importance of broadcasting and sponsorship revenue. There also has to be thought towards next season and beyond. They will look at cash flow, cash flow what part owners are playing, what revenues are continuing to come in currently offset against what has been lost. They will keep an eye on which clubs have agreed deferrals and wage cuts with players and discuss which agents are being deliberately awkward with contracts of their clients that expire on June the 30th. And how to resolve that last one will be a tricky issue and they will discuss whether there should be a standard league position on the extension of those agreements and while the Premier League really shouldn't be criticized for trying to maneuver through and pass these uncertain times, they should be providing greater leadership and direction and I think a greater communication towards the fans. There has been definitely a lack of consistency and direction, but um, I think that sooner or later we will get more clarity on how the Premier League plan to resume the season. The disorganized nature of communications and clubs doing their own thing, for example, some turning to the furlough scheme so quickly while others showed no intention to, smacked of the Premier League not being in control of its business and as it needs to be. At the beginning, in 1992, it was all powerful. It dictated what the clubs were doing, negotiated the TV rights, but increasingly, with all that money that flooded the game, the power has shifted towards the clubs and to some extent to the players as well. And uh, the Premier League has struggled in this power vacuum. What's happened now is everyone is looking at the Premier League for direction, but they, they rev haven't really been in charge for a number of years. It's the clubs and the players being in charge really and not the Premier League. And the Premier League footballer who wanted to remain anonymous uh, gave a very detailed interview on his thoughts about the current crisis and how the Premier League are planning this project restart thing. This is what he said. It's too soon, much too soon. Is there any appetite for it from the players to restart the Premier League? I don't think there is. Is it practical? No, it would be nice if we, if we the players, got a say in it. We are just the mugs who have to play and put our health at risk. A lot of lads' minds are not on playing football right now and they won't be in four weeks either. So much to do with playing football is about how your head is. If you are not fully focused, you are no good. And we see the death toll every day and it's really distracting and worrying for everyone. What I would like someone to tell us is how many de deaths per day is an okay amount to allow us to play football again. 600 means no, but 200 means yes. I can't accept that. It just feels wrong to me and I know many of the boys feel the same. Reading between the lines, they feel a bit like they are being treated like circus animals, like it's our duty to go out and entertain people as if there's a war on. We keep being told health and welfare of players is the most important thing, but I'm cynical about that, very bloody cynical. Also, you've got to remember some lads will have relations who have died, no heads aren't right, we are not robots, you can't just flip a switch and we will perform if any fans think we are all champing at the bit to get going at all costs, I can tell you we are not, I'm not up for it at all. It's all about the money, the clubs are desperate, I read that article about the total collapse of football, that's what you called it, I think you are you will be right if crowds aren't allowed for months. Your Man United's and Man City's will be okay, but I don't see how most of the clubs can survive. Unless mass gatherings are allowed in the next couple of months, we are at the end of the road. And that's why I think they, are, uh, they will allow crowds back in, even if it's very risky. Someone in the Premier League will be in the year of some government prick, and they will switch, stitch a deal up to start games with crowds in the grounds and back to some sort of normal, normal by September. And that's what I really think. This is very, very controversial and very interesting by this Premier League footballer. And of course, because he remains anonymous, he can speak his mind quite freely. And this is what he said. There was talk today about how open-air crowds are much safer than sitting in a pub with your mates 
for five hours. Funny that, that's them excusing it happening in advance, getting their defense in first. Next it will be okay to wear a mask if you can't socially distance yourself. You watch in the next morning, in the next month it will all change. But if that's right, why we have banned games at all? You can't go from saying it's dangerous to saying it's not dangerous in just a few weeks. Money talks, doesn't it? I don't trust the government to do what's right. They will have the club chairman, the broadcast bosses and owners in their ears, all the bigwigs. We've got one of the worst death rates in Europe. That's all the proof you need that our government messed up and so you can be pretty sure they will mess it up again. This time over football. They are not suddenly got any good, are they? And have you seen one of the ministers who will make the decision on football? I looked him up. Oliver Dowden, he's called. He doesn't even understand how the football business works. I looked him up on Wikipedia. It says here he is known as one of the brightest political strategists. He's, he must have wrote that himself. <laughs> that is the problem. You've got these jokers in charge. No one can trust them. They say one thing one week, then another the next. So we are right not to trust them, aren't we? Would you trust him to stand up to all the big money men from the league and broadcasters, do me a favor. Regardless of the politics, this mob is just not good enough at the job. That's why they will give it the go ahead. They are weak. They, are, they will not dare be the government in charge who let the Premier League crash. They are dopes. They will give in. People will get sick as a result, but they will pretend they have done everything right like they have for weeks now. So the big question, when will they let people in the grounds? And this Premier League footballer thinks it will be the first week in September. Wow, I mean, that's a very bold and pretty crazy prediction. But the way that the British government wanted to let the Premier League go on, even when all the other leagues were shut down, says to me that, that this footballer might be right. Because if had Mikel Arteta and Kalum Hadzunoy not tested positive, for the virus, the Premier League would have still continued with full stadiums when all the other big leagues were shut down. So who knows what the Premier League and the government, British government will, will decide. We don't, we don't know that yet. So of course not, nobody at my club has uh, told me that or even hinted at it. The Premier League footballer continued. All we have been told is there are talks ongoing, so keep yourself as fit as possible. The clubs have been talking and there is a vote on the June restart soon, that's it. I still think the behind closed doors thing is a non-starter, it's too complicated, too much administration is involved. Also it means testing everybody when those tests should be done on frontline workers, not footballers. So that's a bad look for a start. My guess is that most players are against it, but football like you wrote is done without live games and September is probably the edge of the cliff money-wise for most of them. If there's no hope for any other live football this year, then they will push it through. But if they put September on the table, then they will wait it out. So they will trade not doing it in June, which no one wants, for a later date when they will hope things have improved. I bet the clubs will give out masks to supporters. Maybe they will reduce the capacity. By September, testing will probably have been done for all those who need it, so pressure will be off about that and they will test us every few days without it looking bad. We will have to tra train six foot apart. It will be so much lip service though. You can expect the uh, tablets catching our leads out being too close. And it's hard to say whether players will accept that in September. Depends on how bad uh, the situation is then. The young lads probably will. They are not likely to get sick anyway. And that's how they will sell it to them along with telling them there will be no money unless they play. They, they, that will get their arses in gear. There are lads who have known big money coming in. They don't get where it comes from, they don't even care really, it's just always there. They don't understand that it is all wages that are killing the clubs. You can tell them, look, 75% of the money the club earns goes to us. So if the club is running out of money, that's because of us. They just think the money tap in the Premier League is always turned on and can't imagine it won't be. So if they, if they are told in August it, it's all ending unless you play, then they will be playing, that's for sure. So what do you think about the Premier League footballer actually saying this? That, uh, that the government could let crowds in in September? I think it's a pretty crazy theory, but this is just one Premier League footballer's uh, views. Uh, so we should take it with a pinch of salt and I would love to hear your opinion in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you later guys. Goodbye.